موجود اليوم بشيرمان اوكس بي ال اي لنتعرف على شخصية لبنانية يونانية يمكن كلكم ما بتعرفوها جورج سبيرو ديبي مدير تصوير اعماله مهمة جدا اشرف على عدد كبير من الافلام التلفزيونية رح نتعرف عليه عن قريب بهالحلقة George Spiro DB, thank you for receiving us here in your house in LA. You are most welcome. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here. We know that uh, your mother is Lebanese, your father is Greek, and uh, tell us more about your childhood and your relationship to your father and your mother. It's a little complicated. My mother, uh, her parent took her, uh, her father. Uh, the, but the beginning of the first war to San Salvador, the reason why we don't know, because you know there was problems there in that area, war or all that. And then he opened business with another guy who was there from Palestine, Jerusalem. And they, they are very successful business and my mother was helping them actually. And I forgot to mention, uh, she told me they used to use gold coins at that time, not anymore. So. When uh, the war is finished in the around 20, the Palestinian guy would say, I want to go back to Jerusalem, Palestine. And my, her father, he said, well, I'll go with you because we were good partners. They came to Jerusalem, opened business together. And that's how I end up being <laughs> born in Jerusalem, in the new city part of Jerusalem, Kataman Quarter, you know. Yeah. And you were born in Jerusalem, Palestine in 1937. And uh, I know you are like your mother. Especially uh, that you inherited uh, a lot of her uh, strong personality. She is the hustler in our house. Actually, all my brothers, uh, we everybody knows, even the whole family, she was the driving force behind all of us to achieve, keep going, go, go. Uh, always work hard, look good, smell good yeah. all the time. Uh, my father used to come half a, after half a day of work, sit in the veranda, uh, drink half a bottle of Metaxa and go to bed. <laughs> but she was, she, uh, we are actually, we are more Lebanese blood than Greek blood. I hate to say that. You know? Yeah, because your mother was yeah, there and yeah. uh, uh, trying to force you to work us, and to do something out of your life. And we did. We, we did. followed her orders. Of course, of course. You came to the United States, you were like 20 years old. Why did you leave uh, All Jerusalem? my life, I forgot to mention to you, when I was in Jerusalem, about eight, nine years old, I, I built a tent and I brought a, a shoebox, mm -hmm. like a hole, and I have cartoons, American magazines. I used to cut them and glue them together and make a roll put roll and move one frame at a time through the hole, use a flashlight to light and, and bring people in and charge my, my brothers, my cousin, my friends money all my <laughs> life since I want to be in the movie business. So uh, it continued all the way. Even in school, I went to Terra Santa, which is uh, Francescan. I was in plays, Italian, French, Arabic plays. Uh, and I used to go on weekends all day, Saturday, from nine to five, six, to see four or five movies. This is what... Uh, so you were you passionate know, towards exactly. the And then, of course, uh, when I uh, graduated from high school, I went to work for UNESCO to teach in camps, Palestinian camps. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's half a day in the morning. In the afternoon, I worked for the USIA. That's an agency. Uh, I was interpreter there. And one day I told him what I want to be. I want to be a filmmaker. Yeah. And he helped me get my visa and bank. With the $150 I came here, that's all. Uh -huh. yeah. And when you arrived to the United States, also you continued your studies at college and I, university. I went to City College yeah. for two and a half years. And then from there I went to the Pasadena Playhouse College of Theater Arts. Yeah. Because there are a college and a the theater. Yeah. The college does not exist. Like my, my wife's college, you know, now it's AFI. It used to be Immaculate Heart College. So... Uh, 
and uh, the rest is history. I went into the business after that. You know? Yeah, and I know that uh, famous people like Yusuf Shaheen and Dustin Hoffman, oh, Dustin Hoffman also uh, uh, were graduated, they graduated from, from there. there. Well, uh, Dustin Hoffman was two or three years ahead of me. Yusuf Shaheen about eight, nine years ahead of me, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, I was, they told me I was more outspoken because I didn't take BS from these who bring speakers and give the wrong side of the problems in the Middle East. I used to stand up <laughs> and, Talk about you know, it. challenge the guy yeah. and they liked that. And uh, actually they told me they want me, they, they said, uh, we, you know, when we did the last thesis, I directed a play, original play, we had to repeat it twice. And uh, we have bright, uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, write-ups in the LA Times. But before that, somebody complained, said, this guy is doing all kind of advertising to push his play and all that. And they called me. They said, well, it's not fair. I say, who said it's not fair? This is Hollywood. You mean telling me you want to tell somebody in Hollywood don't advertise your movie <laughs> because somebody else is not. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but I graduated and they never made it. These guys who complained, <laughs> I had to say that. <laughs> because you are a hard worker. Well, they have to work. Yeah, of course. And smelled good. And you always. smelled good, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like your mother's. Uh, <laughs> Uh, told you. Um, I know you, you started uh, your career in, uh, in films, uh, in lighting, as a lighting technician exactly. in the mid-60s. Lighting technician moving to a best boy, which is a helping, bringing the crew and time cars, all that. Then became a gaffer, which is uh, head lighting of the, you know, you work with the cameraman. Cameraman tell you, this is the way I want to light this set. I need this and that. And he go with his crew. Meanwhile, I have the key grip also who control the light for me. That's how it works, you know. And then uh, before that, after that, in 1970, 71, joined the Camera Guild. Warner Brother wanted a cinematographer to do multi-camera shows. Mm -hmm. A lot of our members were a little bit beyond that. So I said, I'll do it, it's less money. And the rest, they were watching me. And these guys, same guys who turned it down, came back to me after I have a contract at Warner's to see if they could get in yeah, and to do multi-camera. I said, no, yeah. you have to have experience in multi-camera. I got back at them. Yeah. So, uh, and then from there, of course, I moved from there to Paramount, still multi-camera shows, you know. So you, you had many steps before you uh, be became one of the best cinematographers in the United States. That's what you said. No, yeah. that's, okay. that's the truth. <laughs> um, so um, uh, we know you are a close friend of Barbara Streisand. Uh, tell us more about... She, she's beautiful. Uh, she's her. the most talented person. But because she is a woman, I hate to say that, way, way back. Now things a little different. Uh, they, they look down at her. She is a great singer, she is a good director, she edited, and she sang beautifully. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way she worked on the sets, I, uh, by the way, I want to mention to you, she dealt with the head of crews, like I have as a gaffer. The, I did it as a gaffer, not cinematographer. My right-hand man, the best boy, she will not talk to him. She will talk to the people who are in charge, and you guys do your thing. She believed in, del uh, in uh, you know, delegating, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, she had problem with Yves Montand. She called him a cheap because we used to gamble. He never pay his gambling. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she was beautiful. And I flirted a lot uh, with her, a little in London more than any place. And uh, she, uh, everybody accused me I was having an affair with her, which I did not. not yeah. But I agreed with them. Anything they say, I said, okay. This is Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood, you know, yeah. I get my name in the, in the other girl. Yeah. Anyway, so. Uh, so you made, you made. She's your, beautiful. She's, she's beautiful. beautiful, yeah, of course. I did a special light for her. Called, uh, these young people know it's a scoop. And I have the painter painted beautiful green and pinkish flowers. And I put ears, I put diffusion with a white material called plain. Now we call it 216. I put a little oil and always we key there on the right side, 10 feet high, 10. I came in with this side and lit her and you have the star in her eyes, you could see that. Ah, it's beautiful. Before going to London, I made my best boy to carry it. Ah. And she stopped the shooting. She said, George, yes, uh, why is he doing it? I said, well, I have a... You know, they Pain. give you shots 
at that time, I forgot which shots before you travel. Yeah. I said, I have shots. She said, well, which hand? She said, the, I said, the right. Do you have a shot in your left hand? She, I said, no. Well, use your left hand. Oh, because I, she wanted you it's, to carry it's a, it. It shows you even big movie stars, they have habits. Mm. They are used to you to look at you. Now, by looking at me, she knows who I am. We kid all that. It's OK. But to put a strange face, it, it, it's a little bit drastic. She will, uh, that will take her eyes to him or whatever. So, but she, she is, uh, to me, is the best actress, best singer, best director, best editor. Uh -huh. yeah. Great. I know you started your company, DB Dash Productions, in the 1960s. Uh, tell us more about your company. Uh, there was a big problem in the school system. By the way, we have the same problem today. It's funny, so many years back. And my partner, uh, was uh, who was a black guy at, and we, at that time we call it Negro. Now we say black or Afro Americans. He was a teacher, and we were talking. I say, you know, he say uh, he, he knows I was filmmaker. I have cameras. I have bollocks, all kind of stuff. And uh, he say, you know, we have we need to do documentaries. I say, beautiful. So we start to do uh, that. He wrote something. Uh, they beat the odds. In other words, we were doing documentaries to encourage young kids especially minorities, to stay and finish high school, yeah. not to quit. The problem was they never finished high school. Okay. So, and, uh, and we did about uh, 20, pilot, uh, 20 programs, you know, shows, seal, whatever you want to call it, and we have good awards. But toward the 80s, when the 1980s came, uh, we used to sell, by the way, 16 millimeter. Yeah. We order uh, 50, 25, 100, whatever, and ship to all over the school system in this country. Uh, all of a sudden, they order one when it comes so to 1980s. It, yeah, it they take one and they copy it on video. And uh, we realized that we stopped shooting. We, we can, you know, the whole company went out of business. You stop. I know also that you did a lot of commercials uh, during these years. The biggest commercials I did were three of them. Mm -hmm. I did many, but uh, they were La Balsam with the Farrah Fawcett. Yeah. That was big, big. And when we finished that, we went to do the Shermac, Germac commercial with Victoria Principal. Principal and the LTD Ford commercials with Hugh Downs, who is married to a Lebanese woman, by the way. Oh, yeah? Isn't that something? So these, and then we did tons of commercials, yeah. everything, everything. Yeah, then you stopped. Uh, uh, in, in, I realized in the because uh, they hired you to shoot two or three days, but you waste two, three other days to scout all that. Well, we don't have budget. For, I said, screw it, excuse the language. No. I went back into television. Uh, oh, I, we did, uh, I forgot. In the early 70s, I was doing MOWs and 90 minutes before I went to do multi-camera shows. Mm -hmm. and, and I got a call from one guy uh, to do a pilot multi-camera film, and we did it. And then ABC said, well, if you come to shoot it on video, you know, and uh, we'll, we'll give you the difference in running, we split it. It's $35,000 difference, film and video at that time. So he said, OK, we went to ABC, we shot it on video. We called Barney Miller. Yeah. And everybody, until today, everybody thinks we shot it on film, and on location in New yeah. York. It was video. Uh, just the way I manipulated the... So the, this is, it was innovative from your side they, that's what to they, shoot uh, in video and, and everybody was uh, thinking that they are, you are shooting like a, a film. Uh, lighting video, everybody did that. But the look I got, which was a dirty look, very contrasty, and control it down and uh, no, uh, usually uh, these days at that time, all the network shows were shot like flat. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, it's comedy. No, it's not. So we, and I use the lights in the, each set to bring it to 98. That means, and I, I bring everything down to the background, the front, this all over the place. And if it goes to Timbuktu and somebody says it's dark, bring it up, you can't. Because these lights were set up at 96, 98, will start to come it. Yeah. So I control the look and uh, we made it dirty. Actually, a funny story. Well, it's a squad room. It's a 24 hours. We put stuff on the floor, cigarettes, butts, and the next day we came to shoot, we found out the floor was clean. <laughs> Somebody came, said, these stupid, dirty people. Yeah, he didn't they're realize they're it was a 24-hour squad yeah. room. You had to be realistic. That's, that's what made my reputation, and the rest is from that. I, I went to different looks also, you know.
اكتشفنا سوا انه والدته لجورج سبيرو ديبي لبنانيه ووالده يوناني ولكن تاثر كثير بالشخصيه القويه اللي كان عندها اياها والدته وترك البلد اللي كان قاعد فيه بعمر ال20 سنه وانتقل الى لوس انجلوس رح نكتشف اكثر عن هالمدير التصوير العظيم بس من بعد هالبريك <تصفيق> I know that you did a lot, a lot of uh, TV shows. Maybe like a said. thousand. Yeah, a thousand. <laughs> uh, like you said, Barney Miller, which did like eight, uh, eight years, years on TV. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Sister, Sister. Sister, Sister, uh, six years. Six years, and um, all were successful. Buffalo Bill, Buffalo uh, Bill. Growing Pains, Tell us more us. about how you created, uh, on which basis you created these TV shows. The TV, uh, first, you know, you have a director uh, with me in multi-camera shows or even in television. Uh, it's different than feature. In feature, you have the director, and he talks to the cinematographer, and the art direction, yeah. and you have collaboration. You have the you say, okay, this is the look we want. In in multi-camera shows, in episodic, the showrunner with the executive producer who has ten writers under him, he is in charge of the show. So I have to please him. So I deal with him. I say, and they know where I come from, what my work. I say, this is, we'll do this uh, great. Now we have directors every week, different directors. They don't have the power to do anything. And, you know, and uh, because I report to him and we created the look of a show already. We change every week. We have, we call it uh, swing set or we go location. That's a different story, you know. And one director, when they pass by to show you, they don't know much. Uh, it's a night scene. The girls on this is on the ten of us. The girls are outside in the porch, and uh, they are afraid to go into the house, you know, because they came late. And the director comes out on the floor in front of everybody. Sexy, I call everybody sexy. They call me sexy. Uh, it's dark outside, and I waited. The crew looked at me to see what I want to say. Uh, when he said, "I said, Bob," shout, "Yes." It's a night scene, you know. He didn't know it's a night scene. That's a direct. Yeah. So I report to the showrunner, the executive producer, you know. Uh, and if he is happy with the look, then you go for it. That's it. And I'm Achoo. lucky. I don't want to interrupt you. Yeah. I'm very lucky because it depends on the story. In sitcom, always they, they want it to be a little bit not bright. You know, uh, you don't want to have a too many dark area to to cut down on the comedy on the laughs, you know. But at the same time, all the executive producers I work for, they knew where I came from in one scene on Growing Pains. The father is dying of cancer. He goes to her, his uh, daughter, tell her, here's a buck, shoe buck, insurance, money, all that. I am dying. So a scene like that, you cannot have it bright like always. So I, run, I brought down everything down up to a point, and they talk, you start to cry. They go to the kitchen area, I brought almost everything down the corner and uh, I put the sky like a sunset. This is, to me, his sunset of his life. Yeah. He's dying, you know what I mean? Yeah, I Then understand. you go into the dark area uh, outside and you do the whole thing. And people, uh, the crew say, uh, Mr. D.B., you know, the corner is darker. I say, you stupid. This is a network. Net he, he came from the network. Yeah. This is motion picture. This is art. So you, we created the look to help the story because my job is to tell a story with lighting, like these beautiful people here. So I light to tell a story. 
It's beautiful. That's what we do. So you play with the lighting and the dark side. Uh, well, also you know, your mood. You create the mood. The mood, it's, of you know, course, the, of course. You know, you cannot have a woman talking about cancer and dying. And put and it in a very spot. light. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, somehow your brains, you know, your yeah. rods here on your eyes, yeah. it's, it's different. So, as you told me before, you did like thousands of, of TV shows. Uh, which one is uh, the, the one you prefer? Or Barney Miller, Barney number Miller. Why? one. Why? Because of the stories. Mm -hmm. We never, we came in to shoot on a Monday. Uh, we start 13 pages. We have to finish by Friday. We didn't have an audience, you know, we have four cameras who shoot one, two, three, four, whatever. And then the next day we have, well, uh, maybe 30. And Wednesday we start to shoot. And uh, Wednesday around 7, 8, 9 in the evening, we're still shooting. Uh, sexy, yes, we have a, uh, a scene coming down from the office. It's going to be snow. You must be kidding. We don't have anybody. Snow, what? We cannot do You have to rig it. Yeah. Uh, so what we do, you know, the, the spray, the young men here, they know, the spray glue. So 7, 7, I spread the windows. On both to, sides, to show, blue. Well, yeah. I put a little blue light, we made it look. You know, like in other words, was uh, uh, the reason we are always late, you know, because he will never accept bad st uh, dialogue, mm -hmm. story wise. And we go home at 7, 7 30, I'll be home. My wife is already gone with the kids to school, take two hour nap, then go back to work. So Barney Miller was story wise, character wise, perfect. After that, Another big soul number two to me is uh, Buffalo Bill series. Was a good, good character, good show. Uh, the screenplays are great. After that, Night Court, but Growing Pains is, although it's a children's show, it still was a family show. Uh, another good family show which I liked, we did a lot of things, was Sister Sister. Yeah. You know, it's, so to me, all these shows that were great are the family shows, not the funny, uh, cute, yeah. gimmicky, you know. Yeah, the family show in which there is always a message Exactly, also. exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So for you, working is, of course, a very serious thing, but it's a lot of fun. You know, uh, the, the producer say, uh, we want to do a scene. Uh, I say, what is it? You know, we are shooting, you know, a huge restaurant, which is on a ship and they want to bring in a bathroom. I say, how are you going to bring the bathroom to the set? He say, well, what do you mean? I say, we shut it before. Doesn't mean that shut it before, we break it, tuck it, and store it. You have to bring it, build it, paint it, and light it. They don't have no concept. I say, we have a huge restaurant. So to make it easy, they gave me another uh, well, uh, shot. It's raining, out exteriors, for two words. We have to work for two, three hours, just rain and light it and just for, for two, two words. You know, it shows you uh, we had a lot of problems with that, you know, but I have fun with it still, you know. Yeah, and you worked with many studios like uh, Warner Brothers, Warner like Brothers, Paramount. Yeah. Uh, tell us more about your experience with these studios. Well, Warner Brothers, I was supervising director of photography, they called me. Why? Because I, d I do one show, become the series. And uh, I go to do another one, another part of the series. So I cannot do more than one or two. So I bring other people in. So at the same time, they give me 10 year contract. That means, and we were about six, seven, eight shows on the lot. And I'll be doing growing pains. And they call me and say, sexy, get your butt here on stage seven. That's not good. We have a shadow. You know, we bring a guy to shoot. All of a sudden he's adding lights all over the place. And they say, and the sound man is mad and telling everybody, when DB was here for five years, we never had a problem to shadows there. This guy is here and we have shadows. It's not the sound, it's lighting problem. Mm. You see, you have to worry about booms when you shoot. Two booms on the set, that's important, you know. Anyway, I, I'd say, oh, hold, put the booms. Oh, oh, what's that light there? Okay, who put that? The camera. He added five, six lights for nothing. And he said, I said, what's that, you know, the problem one? He said, an eyelet. I said, well, the, the marquee post, the star, sitting, facing you, and he put a light that 14 feet high. That's not an eyelet. An eyelet is this one is an eyelet, you know. So we save it. So that was my job. Mm -hmm. Then I go back to shoot my own show. 
Uh, it happened in many different shows. I have to watch it all the time. So you watched but many shows in the, the same, same yeah. time. So lighting is very, very important in filming. It's like 70% of the, of the movie, of, of the, the technical to side. To me, it's a nine, 100%. A 100%. Uh, I, I gave a lecture at the University of Pennsylvania about cinematography. Yeah. I went to the board, blackboard. I put, it's the economy is stupid, I said. Everybody looking, uh, looking at me, think I'm crazy. <laughs> I show some clips, you know, dark, this, happy, different looks. And I told him, what did they think, you know? Uh, he said, well, yeah, it was okay, okay. What do you think, he, why did they change? One was dark, one is, none of them said lighting, none. Mm -hmm. You know, you tell a story, that's why you light, you know? You, you, you paint with lighting, of course. You, you write with lighting, you know what I mean? It's yeah, a, yeah, I understand. And then I run back and I told him, I say, it's funny, I gave him t-shirts and hats. I say, you don't deserve it because for two and a half hours, none of you gave me the magic word, mm. lighting. Mm -hmm. And then another magic word, storyteller. We are storytellers. Of course. We, use, we tell stories by lighting Life. and the, we use all these art tools. This is a tool, the camera, the light is a tool, the sound is a tool. Anyway, and uh, then I went to the blackboard and erased the economy. I put the lighting stop it. It's the lighting stop it. I hope they learn one thing, at least from that. Yeah, of course. So they... it's definitely the light. على الهوليوود بولفارد مثل ما شفنا جورج بيرو ديبي انسان كثير قريب على القلب رح نكتشفه اكثر كاب وكجد ولكن من بعد هالبريك الاعلاني Let us talk about your uh, wife, your late wife. So you got married with a French in 1958. 58. At, we did uh, the movie together. Yeah. We never went to USC. I was at uh, the Pasadena Playhouse. Yeah. She was at the Immaculate Heart College. The director who was shooting it for USC, a project at the university, was Iraqi, a friend of mine. And uh, I, uh, we were working together. I flirted watching her all that for three days. I didn't like her because I thought she's different religion than mine or this <laughs> and that. Finally, I found out we have the same background and that was uh, history. Uh, and we, and we you went fell in out, love and you went out. And we, we buried her actually uh, on our anniversary in June. You know, we got married. We, we got uh, her birthday in uh, January 14. We got married June 14. Mm -hmm. We buried her. June 14. Mm. It's, it's, it's a, she is beautiful. Uh, it was a sudden blood clot from the heart to the uh, lungs. She, uh, we thought she lived to 108, 103. Her mother, which I built her house in the back, you see, yeah. uh, lived to 98. So you so thought she your was wife. bilingual, pure French, pure English. Uh, she has master degrees in linguistic, Japanese, Chinese, and she was a director at uh, CSUN here, which is university in Northridge, you know. So, and so she uh, worked also uh, in film. Uh, well, what we, uh, not, it was education more, but she worked when I did DB Dash production, our films. I used to bring everything here. We shoot, let her deal with it to the lab, back and forth, and the editing on the weekends, yeah. take her. She was our liaison person, you yeah, know. Yeah, and you have 
Three wonderful uh, kids, uh, a boy and two uh, daughters. The girl, number one, Suzanne, yeah. the boy, Mark. The young one, Marie the Lebanese guy, yeah. is uh, Loris. Yeah. yeah, and uh, five grandchildren. Yeah. Beautiful. Tell us more about you as a father. Uh, it was a great experience for you, of course. And uh, how did you uh, deal with them when they were kids? Uh, you took them with you uh, we, uh, on shootings? Actually, none of that. None of that. I'll tell you why. <laughs> uh, my, except for my big daughter, the, the, the oldest, she came a few times, you know, and I used her to come when I was training people to move from film to video way, way back. Uh, because I was uh, president of the union, they needed, we need, I knew in the future we'll do more video. Look at it, history now, we are doing digital, you know. Anyway, uh, she used to come and help me on weekends while she was going to say, hey, you know. Uh, but uh, the rest, uh, like uh, Mark, when he was a kid and she was a kid, she was okay, but uh, they came to visit me on a location in Las Vegas where we're using the we we'll call it Liberty f uh, f uh, fans, the uh, big, big fans, put the dust, earth colors, and throw everything. You know, it's Gregory Peck was the star of that show, uh, the stocking moon mm -hmm. it was, and uh, we have stuff like that, the Arabs, you know, all the stuff, and they came in when, the, especially the boy, he saw black all that, he saw scared, he never went into a set again. No. So I kept my kids away from the from sets. And no, none of them uh, uh, is working now into one a, a is film. dealing with high, with uh, with satellites yeah. uh, for the government through Boeing. The Suzanne was uh, very very successful at uh, uh, City Core in New York. Then moved to London. Was private banking manager of the Middle East and uh, Europe. And the youngest one, as we speak, he's in Hawaii business. She is a marketing director for a huge uh, uh, web, what do you call it, internet uh, company, you know. Right. Very successful, all of them. Yeah, yeah, like the, their father. Like their father, grandmother, uh, like the Lebanese mother. Uh, like <laughs> the, <yeah. laughs> Talking about Lebanon, uh, you have never visited uh, Lebanon. Oh yeah, I was there. Oh yeah, I've been there many times. Before, ah, you've yeah, been before there. Before I came here, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and before you came here. Yeah. But since you are no, here. No, because of it's the been like problems. It's like years, one, yeah. Second, I work day and night mm. to move to, I mean, uh, all these stupid we awards, stupid no, awards. No, we'll talk about that then, not stupid. You know, <laughs> these, that, it's work. That will tell you that I worked 20 years. Mm. This will tell you I worked 40 years. You know what I mean? Uh, in our business, you work 15 hours, 16 hours. And in the beginning, I used to go locations, four or five months, nine months away. So that's why, by the way, I came in and moved to multi-camera shows because you work long hours, but you're still home. I you understand. come home, you know yeah. what I mean? So, uh, so you don't have to travel a lot. No. So now do you have, uh, would you like to visit Lebanon? You told me that you would uh, like to visit it with in, your daughter. My daughter in London, we want to do that. And I like to go and find out uh, in that area. In Ashrafiyeh, uh, Ashrafi Ashrafi your mother's what relatives. Do you, how do you say it? Ashrafiyeh. Ashraf because I picked up from my mother and I forgot all about it until today. That was in 75. Hmm. You know, she told me, and I remember it only when I talk to you. Yeah, yeah. It's like my French when I, I go to France with her. By the way, her family is still there. Her one brother is still alive. Uh, when I go there, I speak what I learned in in the elementary school. Yeah, in yeah, French, and you, you know, speak, speak. Yeah, you speak yeah. A, a bit of Arabic and too. As a father, I was very active always when I am here. Otherwise, my wife, the beautiful French. She would take care of them, do the piano, skating, yeah, football, like all soccer, tennis, all the stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's it. The Mehanie Joe Spiro DB in the early 60s. بأهم شركات الإنتاج وأسس شركته للإنتاج بأوائل السبعينات وأشرف على أهم البرامج التلفزيونية ولكن نحن نكتشف أكثر عن حياته الشخصية من بعد البريك الإعلاني
you feel you are uh, half Lebanese and uh, uh, every day every day and I eat Lebanese <laughs> and you eat Lebanese every day I, um, I have hummus if you want to do. I <laughs> have one other one maybe after the oh, show <laughs> I, have, I have pizza bread you know I have that <laughs> thank you uh, would you like maybe to 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 make a movie in Lebanon or something like it that it depends on the story I, if you have a good story, yeah, uh, yeah, Lebanon yes, itself yes. is a is a yeah. very long story. Yeah. It's it's a story more than anything. It's a story. Uh, yeah. So uh, somebody told me about Jerusalem way way back. They would go there. I said, uh, I don't want to go. They went to shoot outside uh, outside Bethlehem. And you know what they did? Huge blue backing, and they shot in front of the blue backing. What kind of a guy would do something like that to of go on location? Course. So you go to Beirut, you have to use Beirut. That, that's 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 the locale, you know. And use there's it. a that's lot of material yeah. in, in yeah, Beirut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I Let's make it a dream for me. Yeah, and any dream can come true. Always. Yeah, uh, I see a lot of uh, awards all around the house, uh, more than 100 maybe. Uh, tell us more about. Or that w before I do anything about the you awards, are you a have, very you successful have the Emmys and all the awards, but yeah. uh, I never do something on my own myself. It's you know, I am on a set. I'm in charge. I tell them what to do. But this is the work of a lot of people. You know, I get the award because it's my name there, and I am in charge, whatever. But uh, for this award, life achievement in television, because I spent. Uh, 40, 45 years, you know. But what made me is my crew. I have good, good crew, you know, and uh, that's why I am successful. Uh, if you have a lousy crew, you will not be successful. It's so the teamwork. Uh, I attracted, and I made sure they get paid. I go to the studio and fight for them to get good, uh, good salaries, you know. So I am as good as my crew, but uh, the rest, it's, don't worry about. Awards are awards. And you could take pictures of them afterwards. <laughs> yeah, of course we will. But it's always uh, happiness. And, yeah. and I'll tell you a funny story feeling. on yes. one of the Emmys. One of the Emmys. Yeah. Uh, I have four or five or about six. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, I had. The, I was uh, very high fever. I, I didn't want to go, but my wife was always pushing it. She was like Lebanese more than me. Pushing. I said, "Well, okay, well, don't worry, honey. Take a lot of uh, Seven Up. Drink Seven Up." And we went, and I went to sleep. You know, the theater, uh, mm -hmm. when you have a thousand people, whatever. And here comes my name. And uh, uh, Emmy goes to George Spiro Dibi. And you're sleeping? She wakes me up. <laughs> honey, honey, we won. She said, that's what we won. I stood up, instead of kissing her, I kissed the guy next to her who was <laughs> nominated for a music award. It's funny, it shows you. Uh, <laughs> then I went on the stage, I kissed the girl, the actress of her name, and went back to sit. Uh, they take picture of you, and I went back to the chair. I said, "We are not going to go to the banquet afterward. We we'll go stay at home." So I came and slept, you know. So it's <laughs> you do. Uh, it's a lot of fun, yeah. but you know. But uh, uh, it's, it's nice to have awards. That means people appreciate what you do. Of course. And every true. award I get, I work harder the next time mm. for somebody else. Yeah. You know. So. No, it's it's a it's a good career but and good achievement. But it's my crews that made me look good always, you know. Beautiful, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, today I know that you're not working anymore uh, as, a as a cinematographer, but you have you are the I chairman. I am busier yeah, now. Yeah, you're busier <laughs> now. Uh, I know you have a lot of students. And uh, they also you are a, the chairman of am, uh, a, uh, you are a member of ASC. I am, uh, ASC, American Society of Cinematographers. Uh, of course, I was president of the union for 20 years, but this is not a union, this is a society. Mm -hmm. They deal with art, with uh, help, education, not, nothing to do with unions like the other union. So I am the chairman of the education and public outreach. We have students from Savannah, uh, California, Germany, Korea, Japan, uh, the Netherlands, from all over the place, they come to our society and we, we have up to 100, 200 people that sit, we show clips of our work, I bring other cinematographers, we show and Q&A. &A. And uh, they ask us how we start in the business, what you do, how you do it, all that stuff. So I do that almost all the time, all the time. 
uh, I'm more busier there than I used to shoot, actually. It's funny. But I love it because uh, you are helping the young generation. Yeah. I'm giving back. You know, my mother made me, now I'm trying to make somebody else. <laughs> it's beautiful. And business, what do yeah. you think about yeah. uh, today, uh, the business? Uh, you, you told me Hollywood is not I what it not used very, to uh, be. No. Well, Hollywood spirit, the work is 29% out of 100%. For two reasons, the economy won up to a point, but the second, well, the economy all the way because we have 37 states in the, this country have incentive programs. That means come to our state, we'll give you 30% on labor and equipment back. So people don't shoot here anymore. And yeah, and uh, the sad thing about it, a lot of our members who used to live here, now they live in Louisiana, in New Mexico, in Arizona, in New York, in Florida, because all the jobs are going to these states. Louisiana, they have seven features shooting now. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the 40% they give back to the producers. And the producers, let's face it, it's called show business. Show, show business. business. They are in it for the money, not for the art. Very few, very few are the art. So it's the bottom line. It's cheaper to do something, there they go. So that's why I don't like it. As a president of a union, uh, we have 6,000 members in this country. A lot of our members got hurt Financially, they lost home, they have divorces, because we don't have too much work here. Plus, Canada also took a lot of our work. Mm -hmm. New Zealand, Poland, uh, Romania. Romania could uh, hire a guy to paint the walls. Real painters, they're artists, for $19 a day. Here, it costs you $30, $40 an hour. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't comp compete. Of so course. that's why I don't, I am not happy with the situation here. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in your area, the Middle East and yeah, beyond. Yeah, what do you think about it uh, in the Middle East? That's the situation, you know, finance also. Yeah. You see, uh, in London, if you are in London, it's the capital global uh, of global economy. And you deal the Asian markets, uh, Middle East eventually. I know we have a lot of problems, but still, you'll have a lot of activities happening and uh, moving up, you know, more production, more work, you know, in, uh, mm -hmm. very, uh, eventually, you know. And if there are many uh, young people uh, watching us today, uh, a lot of young Lebanese who are really uh, passionate for this business and they want to leave Lebanon to maybe to come to the United the States, States uh, do you, what do you tell them? Well, here's a guy who was born in Jerusalem, Lebanese, came to this country and look where I am. So I will never tell them not to do that. Yeah. There are a lot of opportunities. Yeah, but they have to know one thing. You cannot sit and watch TV and drink beer on weekend. You have to work, study hard, get education. You have to, until not, not high degrees. Uh, be bachelor degree is the highest because you always start in our industry as an entry level. Mm. You cannot finish high, uh, uh, college and come say, I want to be camera guy. It takes experience so uh, if they work very hard and save money because when you start in our business i work uh, two three months a year that's it so you save money because it keep you going and help you stay in the business so i encourage everybody to do whatever they want in this country actually it's very in hallowed more than any other place in new york it's good too you have a lot of competition because of the digital business you see behind you there, not film. It's much more democratic and much easier to get into the business. But for each job, there is a thousand instead of 200. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you have to have good, good attitude, work very hard and very knowledgeable with the industry. And you'll make it. If I made it from nobody, nothing, I, they could do it. Yeah, of course. And if... Uh, including women. Including women, yeah. of course. Yeah. And if I had uh, a good story to in Lebanon, so I would like to invite you and come and work and visit Lebanon. Uh, would, you, would you like and accept my, my invitation? We will talk about that. <laughs> I'll talk to my agent. <laughs> By the way, speaking of agents, uh, yeah. Karen, I never had an agent. Yeah, I, I know because never. I talked to you. Uh, never, it, I was I communicating uh, yeah. directly with yeah. you. I never, never had an agent because uh, I, I say this is what I want. 
Other people say, well, we'll take half and we'll bring equipment with us. Never. I never dealt with equipment. None, none, mm, none, yeah. none. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's okay anyways. Uh, and smell good, always. <laughs> always. You know, you work with people. Uh, you eat sardine, you smoke. You're not, you don't want to go next to a movie star or somebody and smell. Okay? No, you smell good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, George uh, Spiro DB, thank you. It's and, a pleasure. And really, uh, we would love to see you in Lebanon. Maybe also give some lecture to uh, Lebanese I'll students. Be, and we'll do like lighting workshop. I'd and love to do that. Workshop. We'll take it uh, inside, outside, and I'll bring a lot of There is diffusion. I should give your friends here, I will call it DB Diffusion. On every show I use for the last 25, 30 years, I use diffusion behind the lens mm -hmm. called the DB Net. The DB Net. It's material I use, uh, I buy from in, first in France and in England. You could put it behind the lens if you want or in the front as long as you don't go, the, the camera guys they know, as long as they uh, don't go beyond four, uh, F stop, T stop, four. Five, six, eight, they could see the guys. I'm going to give them uh, some pieces. Yeah, of course. We'd love to. Thank yeah. you very so much. So I'll be happy and uh, give Lebanon, uh, Habibi <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love Lebanon. I love and, and we love you too and hope to see you very, very soon uh, in Beirut in Ashrafi. Bravo. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure. الحلقه تعرفنا على جورج سبيرو ديبي اللي اصبح من اهم مدراء التصوير بهوليوود وقالنا اذا عندنا احلام ما في شيء بيوقفنا انا من بولفارد هوليوود بودعكم يو بيتر سيت داون اي هاف تو جو بي فيري فاست سيدو يو لوك سيكسي اي لاف يو اي وونت تو ثانك my all my camera crews for the last 40 years film and video thank you guys <laughs> ah, my family they are all sitting here i want to introduce them to you without them i am nothing i hate to tell you it's a fact okay Sido. thank you now usually at this point uh I, I asked for a beautiful lady who that uh, backed me for 49 years. <laughs> to come up here and share the award with me. Uh, physically, she's no longer with us. But I know I feel her presence here tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Dan, Danielle loved you and Patty so much, man. I'd like you to, to help me accept this award they have made. To Danielle Janine Dibi. Pour cette émission et pour plus d'infos, visitez notre site internet www.mtv.com.lb.